Hello everyone. Something I've been doing for a long time now is every time I go shopping, buy an extra couple of tins. And then, just in case at some point there's an issue or a problem or can't get to the shops, there's bad weather. And Just a little selection of stuff, you know, so that I can get by. It's a bit of a prepper thing, I guess. I don't know, it's just a habit I've got into anything that's on offer, like three for two that I use. I'll get some more, you know, get a couple. Things like this tin fruit, the cheap ones that you've got to open yourself, I know. Most people go, you oh, I need a ring pull for that. No, no, you don't need a ring pull. You can get these for like a fraction of the price if you don't have a ring pull. Just get yourself a can opener. So I've been collecting tins of various bits and I'm putting them in my cupboards just in case I can't go anywhere. And then March happened, everything went nuts, people were fighting over toilet rolls, you know, people were going to get that last tin off the shelf, because everything else had gone, and the label had been ripped off and they didn't know what it was, but they'd buy it anyway, it was probably dog food, they probably didn't even have a dog, it was so mad and crazy, and it was like shopping turned into foraging. I didn't really need to go out because I already had a load of stuff in. Now the downside of having a few bits just in case, in case there's some bad weather or, or anything like that, is that you end up getting a bit carried away and filling up your cupboards. And before you know it, you filled up your cupboards and you don't know where you are at all. And then you think to yourself, oh, bummer, what am I going to do with all this stuff? Where am I going to put it? What have I got? What's the sell by dates on it? I need to get organised with it all. You know? Just so that you can know exactly what you've got and where it is. As you can see from a few extra bits I've got in, it's very easy to kind of get lost and forget what you've got. Unless you've got a good system for organising it all. And putting it away so you know where it all is. So as I'm having a quiet day today, I thought I'd get everything out and have a proper sort out. And to be honest, I didn't realise I had so much. I've got enough to start my own shop. So it's really time to get organised. And it was actually quite handy as well, having a few bits. Because but none of us thought after lockdown one that it would ever happen again. How wrong we were. So the issue I got is where am I going to put all this? How am I going to store it? I can't keep it in the kitchen anymore because like I haven't got the room so I need to find a way of organising this. I was looking around for some kind of storage solution because what I want to do is put this, put some lights on, in my garage and store it and have some kind of system going on where I know exactly where everything is. And I haven't got a lot of storage space. So I was looking for something where I could put this 
and the criteria is I need to be able to access everything. I do like a bit of tin fruit by the way. Be able to access everything and also be able to keep track of it all to know what I've got so I don't go out and keep buying more and more and more things I've already got because that's just done. You know, if you end up with things you go, oh, what, what have I got? Oh, I don't know. I'll, I'll just get another. I'll just get another couple of them every time I go shopping. And before you know it, you got loads of stuff. Sell by date comes up, and you're screwed, really, aren't you? You know. So, what's the answer? Here we go. This is the maximum space I can kind of use in order to store stuff because I don't have any room anywhere else. So my criteria is one, it's, if that comes out all right, one, this has got to be portable. So I can move it out if I need to get into my cupboard. Must fix that door. Two, it's got to be water resistant because I can put a tin in here if I keep it in here for six months, say, it gets a bit of damp to it, it could kind of oxidise a bit and nobody wants a rusty tin. It, it's not a good thing is it really, you know, it'll shorten its shelf life and you get it out and you know, it's a bit banky that. So I want to keep these in pristine condition. And three, if I can get my finger up, just like that. Three, three, it needs to be easy to organise and to know what I got. So, it's quite a big ass, really. So what did I come up with? ta -da! A chutney barrel. He's like, what the heck's a chutney barrel? These are used in the food industry to transport chutney. After it's been used once, it then gets discarded by the food industry and gets bought up by a third party seller. So they must have thousands and thousands of these. Um, about if you ever need one of these, just put in chutney barrel and these come up and there's sellers on eBay and all the rest of it. Agricultural sellers, they sell these second hand and they're really useful. They got handles so they can be transported easily. They got a sturdy lid. Where if you get tired carrying it around, you can even sit on it and it's not going to go anywhere. That sounds wrong. Ooh, sucked in there. This is tough polyurethane sort of stuff. They're using water pipes, so it's pretty much indestructible. It's going to keep any moisture out. Got a screw top lid. 50 litres this one, really strong, durable, it's an ideal solution. I liked it so much I bought two, so I can stack one on top of the other, put all my stuff in and then I can put a list in the top so I know exactly what I've got. So the other thing I need to do is make myself a little trolley so that pull the trolley out at some point because it's been really heavy to be pulling around but for me that's like an ideal storage solution this is how they arrive in a box Just like so, these come in various sizes. I've not opened this one before. This is exactly how it came out of the box. So I can give you a good idea of what they're like when you first get them. When you first open it, it's got a very strong smell of mango chutney. If you've ever been down at Indian, 
and you go in there and you have the dips with the proper doms and that adds that mango chutney smell other than that it's beautifully clean there's no residue there's nothing in there it's ideal it's quite a pungent smell at the moon what I did with the other one was I just left it outside let the elements get to it let some rain get inside left it for a week or so out in the garden then I give it a quick wash out and that smell is gone nothing technical about it at all so now with the two I have got now I've got a hundred litres of storage capacity which is actually pretty awesome in such a tiny space as soon as I get some kind of trolley system sorted out here I can then move that out at will and then put it back so I can't think of another system which meets the three criteria of being one portable to keep the water out and um, three, three being easy, easier, three being easy to manage. The obvious question would be, okay, so it's a 50 litre drum. How much capacity has it actually got to hold stuff? I mean, what can you keep in here? Well, these are like 400 gram standard tins that you find on each shelf. I've got 16 in the bottom of there. So, if you was to go 16 times 3, that's 48 cans you can get in there. So that's kind of an idea of what you can put in. And if you wanted to put something smaller in the top, that's your 290 gram, you could put a line of those in easily. You get a probably 20 of these in the top. So you're just kind of getting an idea of what you can put in there. The next question I kind of asked myself was, okay, if I fill this up with cans and I want something that's down the bottom off the inventory list, which I'm going to make, how do I easily get to it without lifting everything out? Here's what I came up with. It's a bucket for tools, a tool bucket. And will quite happily sit in there so just for an example I've now filled this up with a load of tins if I wanted a tin that was down the bottom that's not in the tool bag I've simply got to lift that out and then I can reach in and pick up whatever's underneath this doesn't have to be limited to cans it's limited to your imagination so that's my idea for long-term storage solutions at a very cost-effective price. Let's look at the overall size. From the base to there, about 46 centimeters. The overall width, the outer 36 centimeters. You take the lid off. The depth from the base. To there is 44 centimeters. Um, the overall internal width is, oh we got a little bit less than that, 32 and a half centimetres. That should give you a good idea of the capacity, size, I'm actually going to take one of these camping when the world kind of sorts itself out a bit and I can actually go 
what I'm going to do is put a load of my camping kit and my food in there and then put it in the back of the car and when I get to where I'm going I'm just going to lump it out the back of the car and put it on my camping spot with the lid off and then crack on from there you could also if you wanted to make yourself a big cutting board there so you can have a, a table if you're going camping as I said before you can use this as a seat it's just a really versatile piece of kit and for the money it's pretty much unbeatable strength wise well these have held chutney up to the top so they're good and strong um, can't fault it excellent piece of kit I'm sure all you good people out there can think of hundreds of other ways to utilise these recycled barrels. Feel free to put your ideas in the comments. Give us a thumbs up if you like this. Give us a thumbs down if you didn't. Subscribe if you like it. Just as an example of things coming up in the future. coming up with a plan for something I hope you'll like it I'm not quite sure where this is going yet but it's formulating in my mind so like I say if you want to see more and you want to see whatever nonsense I come up with feel free to subscribe thanks very much for watching everybody and I'll see you next time